Hey guys, Alton here. I want to welcome you back to my YouTube channel and welcome you to our seventh installment of our Learning Linux Fundamentals for Ethical Hacking series where I'm teaching back to you guys what I learned as I'm personally learning ethical hacking. So for today's video, we're going to talk about basic file and directory permissions in Linux, specifically in the shell terminal commands. I'm going to show you how to interpret the permissions in there. I'm going to show you how to change them in two different ways, in the symbolic format and also in the octal or binary format. So let's go ahead, let's jump over to my computer screen and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started talking about Linux file and directory permissions. So while it may look somewhat daunting, it's actually fairly straightforward and simple. So what I'm gonna do is in shell, I'm gonna go ahead and do an ls-lh to output in long format and human readable format. So we're on my desktop and there are some files and some directories on my desktop and in this format, it outputs all this information and it may look somewhat foreign. So we're gonna use this diagram that I put together here on the right to help you understand that. So let's take a look at some example output that I have here for a test folder. So the first output here, the first one on the furthest to the left, it's either going to be a D or a dash. And this tells us whether this is a directory or a file. If you see a D, that tells us that it's directory. If it's a dash, it's a file. So you'll notice over here with all of these, they are either going to be a directory or a file. So I'll try to put a box around them. I know it's somewhat small and kind of off. I guess it's probably better if I just highlight it um, to kind of highlight it. So the first one, this is file, this is directory. The next one is dash, so this is a file. Another dash, this tells us it's a file. A D here tells us a directory, and this one down here, .txt, is a file. Then after that, the next nine different sets of R's and W's and X's and dashes, this is gonna tell us the permissions for this for the current user the current user's group permissions, and every other user. And the way that it works here, it's broken up into sets of three. And the way that it works is the first set of three, this is going to be permissions for the current owner. So for us here, the current owner is gonna be root. And it actually tells you here, and what I've done here is I've color coded it to associate it, is that we have right here where it says root the first one is user, and the second one listed in blue color codes also with what I have here, the second set of three is the group permissions for that user, which is also root. And then the last set of three is going to be all other users. So again, so the first set of three is going to be for the current logged in user. The second set of three is going to be for that group that's listed here. And for this example, we have the root user, and the group user. The way that Linux sets up a new user account by default when you create a new user account, it puts that user into a group which is the actual name of the user account. So if I created a new user called Alton, it will by default put Alton into a group called Alton as well. So root gets to put into a group called root as well. And so again, the second set is for that group and then the third, third set of three is for all other users. So you're gonna notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what these mean now, let's actually talk about the permissions. R means read, W means write, and X means execute. So if somebody has R, W, and X, they have read, write, and execute permissions. And this person here, root for this test folder only has R and X. It doesn't have W, it's dashed out. So they only have read and execute permissions, but not write permissions. And then all of the users also have R dash X. So they only have read and execute. So you could go through all these and you could see what the permissions are. So for example, we have a password.txt file here. The root user has write and read permissions, but there's no execute permissions. 
and then the group itself anybody else that's in the group root only has read permissions because their write and their execute is dashed out and then all other users only have read permission as well so it's fairly straightforward once you understand the syntax now that we know the basic syntax let's talk about how we can change permissions so let me clear out the screen and we're going to do a what is chmod because that's the command that we're going to do so let me actually scroll up on my notes and for those of you that are wondering what i'm using this is one note this is my note my note taking um, software of choice i really like one note so that's what i'm using here and i put some basic notes to talk about this with you guys to hear with this teach back so let's type in what is chmod it allows us to change permissions of a file now we could also do chmod dash dash h we could do the manual page for chmod but we're not going to get that in depth i just want to show you some basics of how to use it there's two different formats there's the symbolic mode format which we're going to talk about first and there's the octal mode format or the binary format which is much faster and and, and a method that a lot of people from what i've read like to use this instead of the symbolic but i think this one the symbolic mode is better for beginners because you tell it explicitly what you want to do so the basic syntax with it is we're going to do and let me actually scroll up we're going to do chmod then our options and then the actual file name or the directory that we want to make the changes on so the way that it works for the options is we would choose the scope of what we want to change and the scope when I'm saying that it's either and let me actually make this a little larger it's either going to be you for the current user G for the group, O for all other users. So we talked about these three already. And then if we want to encompass everybody, we just say A for all. And then what we can do is we can explicitly set the permission. So we can do an equals to a plus or a minus. So equals to means we're setting the permissions to exactly this. Minus means we're taking away specific permissions and plus means we're adding permissions. So let's do an ls-lh again on here and let's do it on our test1.txt file. So you're going to notice here's the permissions right here. We know that the root user has read and write permissions but they don't have execute. So let's add execute to that user for this file. So let's do a type in chmod and let me get that out of the way so you can actually see we're going to say for the current user so that's going to be you we're going to add a permission so we're going to say plus and we're going to add in the execute permission for the current user and then we're going to put in the name of the file test onetxt hit enter and then I'm going to use my up arrow to go through the history so I don't have to type it in hit enter and now what you're going to see is that the permissions have changed. So now the root user, the current user, has read, write, and execute when previously they only had read and write. Now you're going to notice that the other two groups, so the groups of the root group and all other users, they don't have any permissions at all. Let's add some permissions for them. So let me show you how we can do it for more than one group together. And I actually have an example down here. What you'll notice, and we'll scroll up, is that we can type in more than one. So we can say group and other, we can explicitly state what they are for both of them. So let's type in chmod and let's say group and other. We're going to say that the permissions are going to be equal to, let's say that we just want to give them read access. So we're going to say read and then we're going to say the name of the file, test1.txt. Hit enter and let's list this again now they both have read only permissions now we could take that away as well right so let's go back up through my history of commands and let's actually take that away so we'll just do minus so we'll take away read and we'll go back up look at it again and now it's removed so it's as simple as that this chmod command and setting permissions are very simple you use to find the scope user group other all and you can do equals to we can add a permission we can remove a permission we can do it for one group we can do it for all of them we can define exactly what we want to do and let's just do this let's just say that we want to 
do all of them equals to read, write, and execute for this. Hit enter, ls-lh, and they all have read, write, and execute permissions now. So it's as simple as that. That's the symbolic format. Now, let's before we jump over to the octal format, there is one more thing. So let me do our ls again. So let's say that we had a, a folder, which we have here. We have a directory. Let's say that this directory actually had subdirectories and subfolders. Well, if we do the shamad without the dash r switch, it's only going to take effect on that one directory. If we want it to do it recursively through all the different child folders and all the files within them, we have to do the dash r. And that'll make sure that they inherit the permissions that we're telling it to change. So if you do that, just make sure you do dash uppercase r. And that way it's taking effect not only on the parent folder, but all the subfolders and files within as well. All right, so the octal format or the binary format. So this one, I'm not gonna actually go through all the binary and let me actually make this a little bigger so you can actually read this easier. Um, this uses binary format where we have three different bits, right? We have a bit for read, we have a bit for write, we have a bit for execute. And with binary, it's either a zero or a one. Zero means it's off. One mean it's, means it's on, and that's the way that a computer reads it. And with this methodology, you can assign for each permission for read, write, and execute, you can assign it, and this is in binary output right here, you can assign it as either on or off. And then you can convert it to octal, and this is the octal equivalent. And the way that it works is that when the bit is on, the first bit is equal to one, the second one is, is equal to two, and the third one is equal to four. And we're not gonna do the actual binary math because you don't need to know how to do that. You just need to understand the equivalent in this table here. So what you can do is if you want a specific scope, a, the and let's actually go back up to here, so with the current user or the group or other, if you want them to have zero permissions, right? All the bits are gonna be off for read, write, and execute. So if they're all off, the octal equivalent is gonna be zero. If you want them to only have execute permissions, the, it's gonna be the first bit for X, so it's gonna be equal to one. If you only want write permissions, it's gonna be the second bit on, it's gonna equal to two. If you want write and execute, it's gonna be the first two bits, so you have one plus two equals three. If you want only read, permissions, it's going to be the last bit, so it's going to be equivalent to four, so that's going to be four. If you want read and execute, it's going to be the first and the last, so it's going to be four plus one equals five. Read and write is going to be four plus two, which equals six, and then all of them on, it's going to be four plus two plus one, which equals seven. So if you have this simple table here as a reference, and you actually just need this, and then this is all that you need, right? So everything on, it's gonna be seven. And you just look at this. And the way that it works, and let me just add some white space in here. So the way that it works, you set the octal permissions for each group. And so what it is, is to mod. And so and let me actually copy this so it's the same size. So the first one is going to be the current user. The second one's gonna be the group. And the last one's gonna be other. And so for this example here, we're saying that the concurrent user, we're setting the permissions to rewrite and execute. The group, we're setting it to four, which means they only have read only. All other, we're setting it to four, it means they only have read only. So instead of, for example, doing things like this or like this, we can set it explicitly by using this. So you would say, for example, and let's clear this out, chmod 744, I'll just do what we're doing here. So we're gonna say root has read, write, and execute, and both the group and other only have read. And then we're gonna do the file name, test1.txt. And of course, there's a typo there. It needs to be chmod, not chomd. So let's fix that. chmod 744, test1 txt enter and let's do our ls and now you're going to notice that we set the permissions so read write and execute for the current user and then for the other two just read only so this one 
with the octal format, you can't say I'm going to add or I'm going to remove. You're explicitly saying what the permissions are. So let's say that we wanted everybody to have full permissions. Then we just do 777, enter, and they all have full permissions. Let's say that we wanted everybody to have read-only permissions, or let's say read, and then let's say that the other two groups don't have any permissions. And you're going to know, notice here, and I accidentally put in a, a one instead of for read, so one is only execute. So now root only has execute and no permissions for the other groups. So you can do any combinations of these that you would like. And let's just give everybody read and write. So that's going to be six. So six, six, six. And everybody has read and write. Simple enough, right? So that's the octal format. And really, it's up to you whichever one that you want to use. Personally, just as a beginner, I think this one is more straightforward and easier to understand because you are explicitly telling it what you're doing, right? User, group, other, or all. We're either equaling the permissions to read, write, or execute. We're going to add or remove. In this one, you have to understand the basics of binary math and understand how this table works. And if you don't understand the basics of binary math, or if you don't have this as a little reference guide where you can see all of this, then it's going to be a bit harder to understand if you don't have something like this in front of you saying, okay, well, for write, it's going to be two. For write and execute, it's going to be three. Um, it can be a bit more difficult. So anyways, that's going to conclude this lecture. Hopefully it was somewhat straightforward and, and pretty basic to understand just the basic file and directory permissions, how you can view them, how you can understand them, and how you can change them with the chmod command. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys at future videos. Take care.